How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to adjust the front axle pivot on a Kubota GR Series riding lawn tractor. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today in the shop, I have a Kubota GR 2020G riding lawn tractor. And this thing is pretty sweet. It's five years old, only has 200 hours on it. So it is in for its 200 hour service. There's a couple things that we'll be going over. And one of them will be about the four x four glide steer system that Kubota has. I'll talk about that near the end of the video because there is some useful information that I can include. But today's video is primarily going to be focusing on adjusting the front axle pivot. So on this particular riding lawnmower, it has a front axle that pivots right in the center there. And on the older BX style Kubotas, which there are some videos on adjusting the front axle pivot on them, there would be a castle nut right there. You would have to remove a cotter pin and then torque the castle nut to a specific torque and then repin it. And then that is how you adjust the front axle pivot on one of those However, on these GR series, you guys can see that there's only a Zerk fitting in the center there. There's one on the other side as well. I'll show you that in a moment, but the way that this system works on this particular model is there's going to be four bolts here, and then there's going to be two more, and the heads of the bolts are on the other side that you are going to have to torque to a certain spec. So adjusting the front axle pivot is essentially just tightening up those bolts so that the front axle does not move this way. We want the axle to move this way. That's what acts as your suspension on this model of tractor, like many tractors, but those bolts can loosen off. So you want to keep them tight so that you don't get vibration in the axle or the wheels. So coming around to the underside, you guys can see the bottom two bolts are the ones that we were just looking at. And then there's going to be another top two bolts up here. And then there is the pivot on the backside with another Zerk fitting there. So you guys are gonna wanna grease that up. I'm gonna wipe all that down momentarily. Now in the operator's manual, it does have a maintenance chart with service intervals. So it lists all your hours up here and then wherever you see a dot is where you have to do something. So if we look up here for 200 hours, you can just work your way down, you know, clean or replace the air filter, change and replace the engine oil. The transmission fluid does not have to be done, but the transmission filter does. We'll be talking about that later. Basically, it goes on to say a whole bunch of stuff here, and one of them was going to be adjusting the front axle pivot right there, 200 hours. So we're gonna be doing that today. Now, apart from the service interval checklist, they also give you an instructional diagram here, basically step-by-step step, that takes you through all of the service intervals and kind of gives you diagrams to help you along. So you can see 150 hours, 200 hours, it goes up and up. And it pretty much covers everything you need to know, except if we come up here, adjusting front axle pivot, it basically says that if it's not correct, there can be vibration in the front wheels and you should contact your Kubota dealer to adjust it. They really don't tell you how to do it. So adjusting the front axle pivot is essentially just torquing those bolts that hold the axle into position to a specific torque spec. However, because Kubota doesn't tell you what the torque spec is in the operator's manual, you would need something like a service manual to show you how to do it step by step and then to give you a proper torque spec. However, we can figure that out on our own using the general torque specification chart in the operator's manual. So coming back down to the front of the riding lawnmower, if we zoom in on this bolt here, you guys can see that that bolt has a number seven on it. Now this torque spec chart will have every single bolt that is installed on this riding lawnmower. So if you had a bolt that was loose and you did want to torque it to spec, you just have to reference this chart here. However, this is going to be for the lower end bolts. There are going to be some special bolts that we have installed on this mower and those are going to pertain to the front axle pivot. Again, we can see our number seven there. And if we read this note, it says the number seven on the bolt indicates that the bolt is made of a special material and they have their own torque spec chart for the 7T bolt. So now we just have to figure out what size bolt it is. 
So instead of going through and trying to determine the thread size, which is going to be an M8, an M10, M12, or M14, we can actually measure the size of the head, and then that will let us know what type of bolt it is. And to do that, we're going to be using a digital vernier caliper. So I've zeroed up the vernier caliper. We're going to open this up and then close it up on the bolt head, slide that off, and then there is our measurement. We've set it to metric, so you guys can see there, 14.21 millimeter. It was a little bit bigger because I had to slide it off. So this bolt right here would take a 14 millimeter socket. So once again, coming back down to our chart, we know the bolt is the 7T, and we now know the hexa bolt head size. Again, that's the B measurement is 14 millimeter. So you can see an M8 would be 12 or 13 and an M10 would be 14 or 17. So we know that we have an M10 7T bolt and our torque spec is going to be 35.4 to 41.2 pounds feet of torque. So without Kubota giving you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to adjust the front axle pivot, they do give you the information you need to do it yourself. You just have to figure it out on your own. Now, just like anything else, when you do torque these bolts, you probably should do it in a cross pattern. Again, they don't tell you to do that, but I would assume just like anything, you would want to do that. I have torqued these to 36 pounds feet of torque. So that's just over the 35.4 lower end limit. What I did notice when torquing them down was that every bolt was tight except for this one up here. It was incredibly loose to the point where I could spin the head of this bolt just with my fingertips. So after 200 hours, I probably doubt that this was ever done at the 50 hour mark, like it says in the service manual. So you guys definitely wanna be checking the torque of these bolts and you wanna keep them in spec. And obviously you wanna keep everything greased up properly. So with the parking brake engaged, you're going to take your foot up to the front wheel and just rock it forwards and backwards. And what you're looking for is excessive movement in that axle. Again, we don't want it to move this way. We only want the axle to pivot side to side. And you guys can see there's no movement there. However, because the bolt on this side was loose, when this was first brought to me and I did the wiggle test, this side did have a bit of a wobble to it, which is now taken care of. So once again, with the parking brake engaged, we wobble it forwards and backwards, and there is no movement in that axle. So pretty straightforward. Again, this came into the shop for a 200 hour service. So that is going to include, as the manual stated, full service on the engine, take the compressor, blow out all the shrouds, fuel filter, air filter, oil filter. You guys can see down here, August 22, 200 hours. So this thing is completely serviced. I just have to wipe down some excessive grease on those Zerk fittings. And then on the rear of the machine, I wanted to add this in. There's going to be a transmission cover, four bolts, and you can access the transmission for the 200 hour service, you only have to replace the transmission filter. The transmission oil is not replaced until the 400 hour mark. Now, I believe I mentioned this model is four x four. It does have this really cool transmission. You guys can see pretty much the whole thing is hollow underneath. So there is a drive shaft that comes right off of the engine that drives the transmission. Then there's another drive shaft that goes up to the front axle. This unit is four x four. But Kubota does have their own proprietary name, which is given to this model. And that's what's known as glide steer. So inside of this rear transmission are actually a big set of clutch packs. I'll put a diagram up on screen to help illustrate what I'm talking about. That is Kubota's proprietary or patented glide steer. And essentially what they do is just allow one of the wheels to slip and not get as much power as the other one when turning. Now, normally on a zero turn riding lawnmower, you would have two separate transmissions with a lever on either side of the seat that would control that. So you can kind of pivot the machine by putting one in reverse and one in forward. On this, it has one transmission with those clutch packs and this glide steer. So the way that it works is up here on the steering, they have these rods connected to the front spindle. So when we turn the wheel, you guys are gonna notice that the rod there is pulled forward 
And then what that glide steer arm does is it engages the glide steer lever in the backside of the transmission, engaging the clutch packs on this wheel, which then allows it to slip. As you guys are probably aware, when you go around in a circle, the outer edge of the circle has a larger circumference than the inner side so this tire would have to travel a farther distance so if you had something like a posi transmission where it was just a solid axle and there was no differential or there was no clutch packs this tire here would be skidding and hopping on the terrain and if you were on grass it would rip up your lawn and if you were on something like a concrete or asphalt driveway any kind of hard pavement it would wear out your tires faster and could also damage the transmission itself now the reason why i wanted to mention this glide steer mechanism today is because when this mower was brought into me my customer mentioned that he noticed some kind of knocking and then he felt something when he turned now when you operate this machine on hard pavement you definitely feel the engagement of the clutch packs when that lever is pushed back when you steer this machine. However, once you get onto your lawn and you're driving around, you can turn this thing all day and you don't feel anything. So I have some clips here that basically I'm just driving it around on the concrete driveway and I'm trying to get the change in wheel speed compared to the inner and the outer wheel. Not sure if you can even hear the clutch packs or the glide steer lever engaging because again, like I said, when you're on that hard pavement, you can hear a little bit of a clunk, but as soon as you take it onto the grass, this thing wants to turn just like a zero turn riding lawnmower. It has a very tight turning radius, which is really nice for getting around hard to reach areas. So again, if you're driving on hard pavement and you go to turn left, the glide steer lever is pushed back and the clutches engage. You will feel a slight little clunk in the transmission. But again, when you're driving on grass, you should not feel any of that. This glide steer system should operate smoothly and it does on this particular riding lawnmower. Now this transmission does take 3.3 liters of Kubota's premium UDT or UDT2 transmission oil. And when you change the filter, you will lose a little bit of that fluid. So coming up under the seat, there is going to be a dipstick there. You can pull that out, wipe it off, put it back in, check your transmission oil level. And if you need some, add as required. And just briefly, if you would like to check the oil level on the front transmission, you will have to turn the steering wheel to the right so that the top of the spindle will allow you access at the dipstick right there. You guys can see someone previous wrote okay, and then you just pop that up and you just wanna make sure that the oil is within the two little hash marks there, which it is now I topped it up. Both transmissions were slightly over the ad mark, so it's always good to check that. I do have a bottle of Kubota premium UDT oil and whatever's left over after the service, I'll be giving to my customer. So apart from adjusting the front axle pivot or feeling that slight little bit of clunkiness when turning on hard pavement, pretty much everything else is going to be included in your operator's manual. If you don't have a hard copy, you can get a digital copy online just by going on Google and typing in Kubota GR2020 operator's manual. You'll be able to download one easily enough. However, if you want a service manual to explain the more technical things, you are going to have to purchase one of them separately from your Kubota dealership because they don't provide them for free like a lot of other manufacturers do, unfortunately. Also, you guys are gonna wanna stay tuned for next week's video. I have a plastic John Deere hood here that has quite large crack into it and I did buy a plastic welding tool commonly referred to as a hot stapler that I'll be using to increase the structural integrity of that crack. It won't fix it completely and you'll still notice the crack visibly. However, it will add structural strength to that crack. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel up for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.